life is pain. Anyone that says otherwise, they're lying. It's a fact that you're going to face some major pain in your life and tragedy at some point in your life. If you haven't already, you will. I'm not being a negative Nelly here. I'm just being honest with you. Life is filled with pain and we will all experience it at some point. The question isn't, will I have pain? The question is, when the pain comes, will I still be able to praise Jesus? Will you be able to say, blessed be your name? There's a song that we sing uh, called Blessed Be Your Name. We sing this at camp. Maybe we've done it here at Charlotte Avenue a couple times. At youth rallies, I, I sang this song a lot. When I was in college at Freed, I sang this song a lot. It's called Blessed Be Your Name. And the song goes like this. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. Though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, blessed be your name. Here's the point of this lesson. Uh, when God gives and when God takes away, our only right response, response is to praise. Let's go to the book of Job in chapter 1. Job is a, is a righteous guy. Of all the people on earth, he seems to be the one that God is pleased with. One day, Satan approaches God and says, Hey, God, the people of earth, they're kind of worthless. None of them even love you. And God says, Well, well check out Job. He's righteous. He loves me. He obeys me. And Satan replies, that's only because you bless him. That's only because you give him what he wants. And if his blessings were taken away from him, he would curse you. So as the story goes, poor Job, God says to Satan, give you your best shot. Take it all and watch what Job does. And so in a quick succession of tragedies, Job loses everything in his wealth in his reputation his children all in the matter of hours or in a, in a day and look at job's response to when all this happened when everything was said and done look what job says in job chapter 1 in verse 20 then job arose and tore his robe and shaved his head and fell on the ground and worshiped. And he said, naked I came from my mother's womb. Naked shall I return. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Look what he says. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin nor charge God with wrong. Job understood. Job got it right here. He realized everything that he had received had come from the Lord. His wealth, his reputation, his health, his family, his own very life. All he had was given to him was from God. All were gifts. All belonged to God in the first place. Job understood that when God gives or when God takes away, his only right response is to praise. Now, there's another song that we sing. It's a very short song, a lot of verses. God is good. But let's put a word in there to change that sentence. God is always good. Even if it doesn't feel like it, regardless of whether he is giving or, or is taking away, our only right response is to praise him. Why do we have trouble Praising God when life is difficult. We struggle with this because we tend to get caught up in believing what we earned is what we have. We get caught up in believing that we deserve what we have and we forget that all that we have has come from God. 
And it belongs to God and it is his to do with as he pleases. We think what we have is ours. We are possessive. We like the words me, my, mine. And when we start saying that, that, sh- that gives it kind of a way that we're possessive. Do you know the toddler rules of ownership? It goes like this. If I like it, it's mine. If it's in my hand, it's mine. If I take it from you, it is mine. If, it's, if I had it a little while ago, it's mine. If it is mine, it must not appear to be yours anyway. If I'm doing or building something, then all the pieces are mine. If it looks like If it looks just like mine, then it's mine. If it's mine, then it's mine. And if it's yours and I steal it, and it's mine. Those are the rules, uh, the toddler rules of ownership. Sadly, some of us operate by those same rules. Even though we are adults and we are grown ups. We have trouble praising God when life is difficult, especially when things get difficult and causes us to lose what we have because we tend to believe, like I said, we believe what we have is ours. What we have belongs to Jesus. Genesis chapter one and verse one, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Colossians 1, 16, verse 74, by him, All things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things and in him all things hold together. Psalms chapter 24 and verse 1, it says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. When life is difficult and we lose things that we think that, are, that is ours, our possession it may be, our wealth, our health, our money, or whatever it is, we need to remember that it isn't ours in the first place. It all belongs to God. And it is his to do with as he pleases. And so whether he gives or takes, our only right response is to praise. Even as the song that we sing, even when we're found in the desert place. Now we tend to think we are good. As when life throws curveballs at us, when it gets difficult, when we have serious or a big time trouble, Instead of praising Jesus, instead of praising God, we want to ask that that three-letter question, W-H-Y. Why, God? Why, God, do bad things happen to good people? And obviously, since we're good, bad things shouldn't be happening to us. We have this tendency to believe that we are good and that if God were fair, if God was fair, then he wouldn't let bad things happen to us. Because a fair God wouldn't let these things happen to good people. The problem is we aren't good. You know, get that out of your head. Only God is good. Only Jesus is good. In Isaiah 64 and verse 6, we have all become like who is unclean and all our our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We We all fade like a leaf. And our iniquities, like the wind, takes us away. In Romans 3 and verse 23, for all have sinned and fall short to the glory of God. We think we are good, so God should keep those terrible things from happening to me, from happening to us. But the fact is, none of us are good. Any good we experience in our life is the result of God's amazing grace and his mercy poured out on us. Thus, when tragedy lands in our laps, rather than blame God and and rather than complain the bad things that shouldn't happen to, to someone as nice as we are, we should praise him. Because in spite of our sin and and wickedness and evil hearts, God has not abandoned us. He is still gracious and we are still blessed even in the midst of tragedy. We're not good, but thus when God gives and when God takes away, our only right response is to praise. We also have this tendency to believe 
we deserve to be blessed. Because we have been bought into the myth that we are good and we tend to believe that we deserve to be blessed. We've been good, right? So I deserve good things in this life. But when tragedy hits us, we want to ask, what did I do to deserve this? Well, what did I do to deserve this such a thing happening to me? The fact is, you know what we deserve? We all deserve death and punishment. But let me ask this. What did we do to deserve being born, being born in the greatest nation, having the greatest freedoms ever known to man, receiving the greatest wealth ever known to man? What did we do to deserve such a blessing? What did the poor children of Africa do to deserve being born into poverty, war, and disease? I mean, if we're going to ask God, what did I do to deserve such trouble? I have to be consistent and ask the same question for everyone else. The truth is, we deserve death and punishment. Go to Romans chapter 6. If you have your Bibles, go to Romans chapter 6. In verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ, in Christ Jesus, our Lord. A wage is what we earn. It is what we deserve. And what we deserve, as it says right here in Romans 6, 23, is death. For wages of sin is death. But praise Jesus that he isn't fair. He has given us what we deserve, but rather he has offered himself as a sacrifice for our sins. He died so we wouldn't have to. He was punished so we wouldn't have to be. And through his death and resurrection, he offers forgiveness, redemption, and eternal life to those who will repent of their sins and put him on in baptism. When I'm smacked down by trouble in this life, I may be tempted to ask, what did I do to deserve this? But the fact is, I need to praise him no matter what. If you're a believer, I think Christ follower is a better term. There are lots of people who believe, but very few who actually follow Jesus. A follower of Jesus Christ, a follower of Jesus Christ will praise him in every circumstance. And they can do that because they know that God has offered grace, mercy, forgiveness, redemption, hope, eternal life. And they live by that. Regardless of what painful, difficult or, or trying situations they find themselves in, they still have a cause to praise Jesus. Because they know that God is good and that God is holy and that they have blessed them. Even when they don't feel blessed. Romans 6, 23, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Our Lord, what we deserve and what we have earned, of course, we have, as, we, as we have talked about, is the wages of our sin is death. But God's free gift. There's not a lot of things that are free out there these days. But we have a free gift right here. And it's to us is eternal life through the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Whatever pain we are experiencing, the fact is that we have received so much that we don't deserve. And for that, I have a reason to praise God. Now, if you're not a Christ follower, you're just someone who believes. You know the stories you even believe Jesus is the Son of God and that He died and rose again and that you have been added to the church through His blood, but you don't follow Him. You haven't made Him the Lord of your life. You haven't surrendered your life to Him. You too can praise Him in every situation. You can praise Him when you're found in the desert place. Now, doesn't that sound strange to say as someone who isn't a Christ follower can praise him. Well, check this out. In, in, in Philippians in chapter 2. In Philippians chapter 2 and starting in verse 9. 
Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God and Father. A day is coming when everyone will bow in praise. Whether you have chosen to follow him and love him and serve him or, or, or not, you can choose to do so now or you can do so in eternity at ju a judgment day. But one day we will all praise God. And I hope and pray that you will put God first in your life. And praise Him in every situation that you go through, whether it's terrible or whether it's great. God uses the pain in your life to draw Him closer to Him. The pain may be an act of love from God who desperately wants you back as His child. When you, the one who believes but does not follow Jesus or the one who simply does not believe, experience pain and suffering and, and in those desert places... In life, you can praise God because he is drawing you to him. He is using pain as a megaphone to wake you up to his love, his mercy, and forgiveness. God wants everyone on his side. Sadly, most people choose not to be on his side. It's my, my prayer and hope that every Christian follows God and will surrender their all to him. But whether you decide today or not, and I hope that you will decide today that I'm going to follow Jesus. One day we will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. God is greater than my ups and downs in my life. And it's so true. God is way bigger than my problems and worries and struggles. I need to look to him in all circumstances. From the highest point in my life to the lowest valley that I'm in. That should be our mindset going through this life. We looked at how Job got it. Job understood that God is in control. And we need to strive to have that same attitude. Because when God gives and when God takes away, our only right response is to praise. Go to Matthew chapter 6 and verse 25. We will close out with Matthew chapter 6 and verse 25. Matthew 6 and 25. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is this life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, and neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grasses of the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? Oh, you a little faith. Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For, for Gentiles seek after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. In verse 34, therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious, anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. When I read this, 
I see that God's got it. And maybe I've told you that before, and maybe I've shared with you that before, but I have that written in my Bible right there, that God's got it, and he does. And nothing is going to change that. So when God gives and when God takes away, our only right response is to praise. Let's pray. Dear God, we go through so many things in our life, so many tragedies. Uh, I pray that we will always praise you in those situations. We will always know who you are. We will always trust in your will. I pray that we will always look to you in every circumstance that we go through, whether it's good or bad. I'm thankful for this time where we have come together to look into your word, to look at a couple passages And I'm thankful for the word that has so much power in it. I pray that we will take this message and that we will apply it to our lives and that we will share it with others. I pray that we will be that beacon uh, of hope uh, for others and that people will see Jesus inside of us. Dear Lord, we're thankful for Jesus and his sacrifice and everything that he went through. Um, He didn't deserve it, but he did it because he loved us. We're so thankful that he did that so we have a way of salvation. I pray that we will never forget the day that Jesus died. We will always look to our founder and the perfecter of our faith. Dear Lord, we're so thankful for this day that we have had to to worship you, to to sing praises to you, to look into your word. Um, We're so thankful that we can do this so freely. Help us to never take all the blessings that we have in our life for granted. I pray that we will have a, a good week and a safe week. And please watch over us. It's through Jesus we pray. Amen.